In this video, we're going to check out Open Redirect, and I kind of got the idea to share this along with some of the server side code from the Python course. I'm remaking this. We're just not going to type out the Python course. So this is going to be a little different than what is actually in the complete Python course. So we're going to check out Open Redirect, why it's a vulnerability, how it's a vulnerability, and then we're going to look at some of the code and maybe a server side request forgery that you can do with an Open Redirect. So let's go ahead and check this out. So before we get started and we get too far into this, I think it'd be helpful to just understand what an open redirect is. So if we're on mysite.com and then we have this URL where it's going to be taking us, we're passing in a parameter and it's going to take us to mysite.com slash home. It is going to be an open redirect is where it's going to be putting in this other website right here and it's going to take us there whenever we send the get request. So whenever we send the get request, it's gonna take us to this URL. And the thing that makes it an open redirect is if the server side code does not validate this right here where it's gonna be sending us, we can put whatever we want in there and we can send it to a attack site. So an example of this is right here. We have website.com, there's an open redirect. We can tell it to take us to attacker.com and the thing that we can do with attacker.com if we have our logs set up properly is you can pull down the header request and you can actually get information from website.com. So I want to show you, actually we'll hang on for that in just a second. So usually where you find open redirects is gonna be inside of the login, the checkout, the register, the sign up or the password reset and the reason you're going to see open redirect here is you're often going to be sent to a different website or a subdomain or somewhere else like a login panel or portal or something like that and so you often have a redirect and these open redirects are often found inside a flask which is what we use in our python course which is why i cover the open redirect vulnerability so if you're on a flask application or really anything that's using a framework there is a possibility that you're going to have an open redirect it happens a lot in flask because there's just a redirect method that you can import and if you don't give it a whitelist or a blacklist it's going to automatically be vulnerable to an open redirect if it's not hard coded on to the server which i'll show you in just a little bit so the open redirect when you're looking for an open redirect right here you see this url Typically, you can test for a open redirect if you see anything that looks like these right here. These are going to be kind of an indicator that you should be able to not do an open redirect, but try to test for it. So these are just kind of normal parameters uh, that you're going to see. Sometimes you'll see things like uh, the path right here. You'll see things like an LFI, things um, other than open redirect also. So here's some common parameters that you can look for. And then also here is why it can be a vulnerability. So I showed you up here, you're going from website.com to attacker.com, but what if you are creating a new account and you're able to send somebody a phishing email and you're gonna take mysite.com with a sensitive information right here, right here we have a token and we have the URL and we're gonna have them sent to attacker.com slash home and this is going to log on our system and we'd be able to see this inside of the refer header and I actually have this set up over here. Let's see if we come to this page, you can see this URL right here, uh, solutions attack resistance on hacker one. Well, if we open up burp and we turn on the interceptor and we just click on, let's go to um, the bug bounty page and then we come back to burp and we forward a few of these you're going to see right here on this page so we want to go to the bug bounty platform but the refer is going to be hackerone.com solutions attack resistance management because that is where we are now if there's some kind of sensitive information in here and we were sending them to attacker.com instead of right here uh, the bug bounty platform we would be able to see this logged on our system so you'd be able to see vulnerable information so usually what you're probably going to be noticing at this point is open redirect is most often going to be some kind of phishing attack or used in some kind of phishing attack but we are going to look at uh, cross-site scripting which is not really necessarily open redirect but also the server side request forgery so what the code looks like which we're going to cover in more detail is we have our app route so this is where the application is going to be sending us um, I named it vulnerable redirect. We have our decorator function and we have right here. This is what I was talking about. The method that you can import with flask. You can put whatever you want inside this redirect. And right here, all we're doing is getting the URL from the request. And if we're getting the URL from the request, whatever we put in there as the client, we can control that. And it's going to redirect us over there to that. So 
let's go ahead and check this out with our application. So let's come back over here. We can turn burp off. We can shut that. We don't need that. So we are on our open redirect page. So this is going to work in a couple different ways. One, I made this little guy right here a link. So if we click him, he's going to take us to our home page and we can put in a open redirect URL so we can see this two different ways. So what happens like if we click this guy, uh, we can intercept this with burp. We can click the guy and you're going to see that we're getting this redirect and we're going to be getting redirected just to our home route. But you could change this and you could put in here google.com. So we'll say HTTPS and we could delete this and say www.google.com. And if we forward this, shut that off we are taken to google.com right here. So that is an open redirect because our server is not validating the code. And I can show you exactly where this is happening. So we have our redirect down here, our open redirect. We're grabbing the target URL right here. So we're just grabbing the URL from the HTML. And it's been a little while since I've written this. So if we come over to our HTML, we have the URL right here. So inside of this form, we're going to grab this URL and it is going to pass it in as our target URL. So right here, whatever we put in right there, which we're actually able to change inside of burp. And then it's going to come down to the if action is redirect, which it is then we want to redirect to the target URL. And so you can see whatever we put in right here, we are able to change, I guess I already closed out of it. Um, whatever we want to put in to this right here, we can get redirected to. And so if you wanted to hide this, what you could do is you could come right here and you could type in like my attack site.com. And if you didn't want anyone to know what this was, you could just copy this go over to the decoder, paste it in code as URL, and then you could put this inside of the request and you'd be able to send this as a phishing attack and you'd be able to try and pull back information from that specific user. So that is one way to do that. So we can shut that off. So that is kind of how an open redirect works. Um, I put this little box in here because we could just practice by putting whatever we wanted in this little box to get it to work. But you can also do a, we'll look at cross-site scripting. This is something that is not necessarily uh, related to an open redirect. It's more of something just to check for. So I actually have this right here, needs uncommented. So instead of running all of this code down here, what happens is we're going to take the user input in the form and then we're just going to reflect it or we're going to return it back to the user. Sometimes you'll see this inside of like HTML and it'll be hidden and you just won't be able to see it inside of our burp request and you can actually see what this looks like so sometimes what happens is you'll see the url gets stored somewhere in the html and you'll be able to get a cross-site scripting to work so you can see like there's nothing on the page but our cross-site work cross-site scripting works because it actually renders this inside of the html it's just something to look for not necessarily an open redirect so that is one thing to check for now back to the open redirect on the server side request forgery. Um, I added in a lot of extra information here that you probably wouldn't see in a real application, mostly just for learning purposes. So if we look at this, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna grab the URL, the target URL, and we're going to try to test for connections. And I actually wrote these F strings in here so that way it'll tell us if the connection is refused or it works. So the way you would test for a server side request forgery inside of an open redirect is by opening up burp. So if we go ahead and click this, we're going to be taken to our home page, which is how that is supposed to work. And if we wanted to, let's look at this inside of our proxy, turn this on. We click the button and you can see right here, this is where we would do something with this. So if we actually send this to repeater, we should be able to, um, turn that off, come over to repeater, we send this and it tells us you should be re redirected automatically. Let's try a different port and if we send this, it doesn't work and that is because we need to add in our action equals fetch, just like this right here. So now if we send this, we get conf uh, the connection is refused. So this is what I was expecting to happen. So this would be more like a port scan. So if we wanted to, I am currently running um, Burp Community. I have Burp Pro on here, but we'll just leave it in Community because that's what I have. 
set up, we could send this over to Intruder. And let's say we wanted to do a port scan. You could do like a simple port scan. So if we wanted, we could do numbers. And we could do, um, because the port that's actually going to return a good connection is port 5000, we could just do like 4995. And then we'll just go to um, like 5005. So that we don't have to do very many. We're going to do a step of one. And I think that should work. So we should be able to run this. And there we go. So we're looking for, we're getting these statuses 200, but we should be able to look at them. And we want to look at the response and it's going to tell us invalid. Oh, it's because I didn't give it the actual page discard positions. We want to delete that and delete that. We don't actually want that around fetch. We want to use the intruder around the port number right here. So now if we come back over to our payloads, we run the attack. This should work for us this time. Let's look at our response. We're getting connection refused. So we have the connection refused, connection refused, refused, refused. And then we hit 5,000 and we hit um, received 200. Okay. And what you can also do with this is just look at the length and you can look at port 5,000 had a different length. So it's possible that the reason that it is different is because it actually got the 200 okay so the content received it length is actually different so that is how you would do like an internal port scan on a server to see if there's any internal ports for an ssrf okay so we're back here at the code and i wanted to show you what a secure redirect looks like in flask so we have a login function right here and if you remember from the slides i showed you earlier whenever you hit like a login or a change your password or something you're often gonna have a redirect and so here is our redirect so here's our sql statement if you log in and if you look at this you'll notice that it is vulnerable but if you come down here to if the user exists which is what this is basically saying if the user exists you're going to get returned to the URL and then the welcome and then the user ID. So right here we have a path put in here. This welcome right here is actually hard coded. So if you were going to do some kind of URL, you would have to have the URL slash welcome and then the user ID in order to actually get this to work as some kind of phishing attack. So this is hard coded in and it's something that you're not able to change in order to log in with our login function. So when I say like something on the server side needs to be validating it, that is what we have going on right here. So the vulnerable redirect looks like this down here. So you just have the target URL and there's nothing else being passed in. And so you can just change this to whatever you want and then it is vulnerable. But in our login, it is not vulnerable because we have other information in here. So that is a really quick summary on open redirect. We go into a lot more detail in the complete Python course. I will link it up here in one of the corners as well as down in the description below. It's more towards the end of the course if you wanna go into a lot more detail on open redirect. So with that, thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions or anything you would like to cover down in the comments below.